So welcome everybody. It's uh, another uh, webinar, a day in the life of a successful voiceover artist. Uh, my name is Dave Kirby, uh, my co-host, uh, Randy Rector, and today's guest, Liz Taylor. Woo! Hi, Liz. <laughs> a wave for one. <laughs> and, uh, Hi, thanks for having me. This was so nice that you invited me for this. You know what? It's It's what? so nice that you could be with us. I guess we should probably point out that it's People hear Liz Taylor and they look at you and they think yes. she's way too young to be Liz Taylor. <laughs> Obviously, a different Liz Taylor. But uh, so, but to get started, we're gonna we're you know we're gonna have some questions for Liz and talk a little bit about her background, um, you know, her home studio, uh, auditioning techniques, things like that. Uh, we'd love for uh, for people to be able to to jump in as well with some questions. So if you want to go to your Q and A panel. Um, and put in your questions there. We'll try to get to all of them. Uh, we've got an hour booked, and uh, if we don't get to it, you know, I, I apologize. We'll, you know, if you want to email us, um, whether it be me or Randy or whoever your uh, your account manager is, um, and we can pass it along to Liz. Um, but we'll get uh, we'll get up to speed with Liz, and uh, and then yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll go back and forth with some questions from us as well as from you guys watching. Awesome. So a little bit about our guest. So Liz began acting a few short years ago in 2014 and uh, completed work on 25 films with many lead roles. She speaks English, Polish, Italian, and French. She's very versatile, whether it's comedy, drama, or horror. Liz has brought it to the screen. Newer to voiceover, she's found great success booking several jobs with her contagious energy and eagerness to succeed. She's now completed work on 38 films and has uh, two more feature films on deck. Plus a new web series that was, she was just invited uh, onto. Uh, with TV shows and commercials combined, she's now booked over 135 times. Uh, if including voice acting, as of today, make that 141 bookings as a talent. Yes! That's amazing. On that. That's absolutely amazing. You can't well, teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Liz, what, uh, what did you do before voiceovers? I've actually been a realtor for 35 years, and I was the youngest realtor ever licensed in North America at the age of 18. Um, so I've been doing that for a long time, and as my 50th birthday was approaching, I thought, you know what, it would, I need a change up. You know, I need to do something creative and have some fun. So that's when I started acting. And uh, the voiceover thing is just so fresh. This is, what is it, a month and a bit that I joined Voices.com, right? Yeah, and you 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 were, had success almost right out of the gate, which you know is is great when it happens. But you know we try to manage people's expectations, and you just kind of blew all that right out of the water. <laughs> like you said, you've been with us a little over a month, and you've already landed half a dozen jobs. Yes, um, it's awesome. This is the greatest site, I'm telling you. Well, I'll tell you right from the very beginning. I googled. I thought, okay, it kept coming up. You know, oh, voice acting. Oh, doing audio books, which I've never done yet. But all of this, like voice acting, voice acting. I heard it three times in a week, and it's like, okay, there's a point where it's not just random. You need to listen to that voice of what's happening. And I thought, I would love to do that. You know. So I Googled, you know, voice acting and your site came up, of course, as the first, the number one site that for voice acting. And then I thought, OK, let me go on YouTube and see what people say. And there was some doofus that said, oh, don't don't join Voices.com. You'll never get any work and it's expensive and it's just whatever. And then I listened to the, the sites, the different sites that he had recommended this guy. There's free sites. No, no. And I thought, oh, my God, these people sound rubbish. Like, it's just. I think it's so important if you're going to invest in yourself, then you should be with the best company, get yourself set up and do it properly and be, be viewed as a professional. I like I don't know how many thousands of submissions they're getting from these free sites, but boy, oh boy, they sounded awful when I listened to some of the samples. And I thought, no, let's go with this one. And he, they didn't tell me to say this on Voices.com either. <laughs> that's just the truth. Like, honestly. So that's, yeah, I'm glad well, I signed up with you. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you point that out because, and, and I try to let people know that it's when, you know, when it's, it's the overall grand scheme of things, it's not expensive. I mean, yes, $400 is not just a, a drop in the bucket for most people. But the way I try to, you know, make people see it is, and, and as does Randy and Sean and everybody else, is you're, like you said, it's, it's an investment. And what you're doing is, for lack of a better way of putting it, you know, you're you're weeding out people that aren't really interested in in doing it seriously, which is fine. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. You know, but we want to make sure that it's a great experience, not only for the talent, but for the clients as well. And so, you know, you, if you figure on average, if you're auditioning with 
50 or 60 other people per job, that's very manageable for a client. But if they're getting thousands of auditions from people that you know, didn't even want to put in the, the effort to getting the right equipment like a microphone, maybe they're auditioning with their cell phone. It's uh-huh. not a good experience. And so, you know, you, you put a membership fee there that, you know, makes you want to be committed to before you start it, but yet it's low enough that you can make it back with your first job. Yeah. And I just heard you have a Black Friday deal that's cheaper than what I paid when I signed up. So what's that about? <laughs> uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk after you. <laughs> But that no, the, you know what? And you offer for people to start, you know, a good deal compared to the the regular price. I think you know what? I think it's a great idea for people if they're going to take advantage of it now. If you if you've been thinking about it, you are investing in yourself. You are your own business, and you're hundred percent right. Oh my goodness, that's why you get the great clients. You've got all these huge clients that I mean, all the top brands in the world really go with your site because they're not listening to like thousands of. They don't have time to listen to rubbish, right? They just they know people are there, they're invested, and they're going to hear what they want to hear and pick somebody. That's all, yeah. right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your your journey towards, you know, what gravitated you to, to voiceover as, as, as it happened. Well, like I said, like it came up three times in one week before I signed on. And I thought, geez, like... So it kept, it was a recurring theme. And then I saw somebody I know on Facebook who posted a little caricature of himself and said something about that, that would be him on voices.com with some gig, right? I thought he had booked it. And I know him and I thought, oh, okay. So that's when I started this investigation of Voices.com. What is this site? And compared. And uh, it's funny because a, a few days ago, I sent him a message and I thought, so like, what's that cartoon you're doing? He, and Or I posted something on Voice about Voices.com, about like the bookings and all five-star reviews and how great it is. And he said, you're actually booking? He said, I didn't book anything. And I submitted like to a hundred things. And I thought, well... Like, are you, like, what are you using? Do you have proper equipment? Do you have like a sound studio? He's using his phone, you know? Like, so if you're going to, you got to get set up properly, people, (laughs) right? I think that's, and Dave, you were instrumental in that, weren't you? You should tell about how fun (laughs) that was. So, okay, I have to tell the people. Hi, people. I'm Liz Taylor. <laughs> but when I was thinking about this and uh, and went to find out about it, they assign you a mentor or somebody to help guide you into the process or ask questions. I got Dave, who's doing uh, this interview today. And so I thought, okay, like, I'm, I'm not a stupid girl. I thought, he, and he was saying, oh, there's, you know, th- there's one particular gentleman who's booking a lot. And I thought, okay, what microphones he using? Tell, can you look up what he's using? What equipment is that guy? Because if he's booking, I, I don't know anything about anything, right? So, and Dave looked it up and told me, and I thought, okay, hold on. And I went on my phone on my Amazon <laughs> Prime, and it's like, okay. Okay, that's ordered. It's coming tomorrow. <laughs> he, st- he burst out laughing. I thought, what? You just ordered it? It's like, yes. What else do I need? You know, so it was at a point where I'm ready to go. Let's go, go, go. But they're very helpful. The people in letting you know how to set up. Just ask, for goodness sakes. That, well, exactly. And that, that's what we're here for. I think the story that I think I must have shared with you was one of our favorites is a fellow by the name of Sean Guernsey. He's just such a, a wonderful a wonderful voice talent and a wonderful person to work with. Um, he came to us a little over a year ago, and I, I love telling the story because he had no background in 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 acting, broadcasting, voiceover, nothing. Uh, just for you know health reasons, he needed to find an unconventional uh, way of earning a living. And you know he he got the he got a, a decent mic and just uh, you know he auditioned to everything. And before he knew it, he was making a ton of money just because he had the right equipment. He had a good he had good sound. And he auditioned a lot. And that's what that's that's what you need to be successful. And those are the two keys to having success, especially on an online platform. Good audio quality. Yep. Um, and just audition a lot. Well, yeah, so. it's it's sales. It's like sales. I mean, I've been a realtor. I think I'm I'm sort of conditioned for that. You're either self-employed or self-unemployed. And sales is just a numbers game. So the more you audition, the more bookings you're going to get. So I just, I, it's, it's like I can't wait for 9 a.m. till they start coming through. Because <laughs> you have this great system where you get an email. It's like, oh, this matches your whatever. And it tells you that there is an opportunity to go and record. And it's like, my son is like, okay, you be quiet over there. I've got to go do an audition. <laughs> you know? I love it. Like, I love it. I can't even tell you. Can you tell? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, I'm so excited about them because it's like this. 
little challenges constant all day. You get so many audition opportunities, like 20, 30 a day that come through that invite you. And it's like, it's fun because they sort of, they want to direct you in the, um, in the little write up and they say, you know, we want a soft spoken mom role or, you know, a granny or whatever. And you get to play, you get to play. Liz, on, on the topic of uh, how you sort of made your journey to voiceover work, uh, do you find that you're using your acting experience? Yeah, absolutely, for sure. I'm, I'm finding that. But I only started acting three and a half years ago, too. So it's not like I'm like I've never had an acting lesson in my life. But I've been on the big screen at TIFF four years in a row and I've done 140 gigs, a couple <laughs> of TV shows coming out. You know, there's a lot going on. But I think it's yeah, it's just a passion for being creative and having fun at this point in my life. So how would you describe your sound? Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm booking a lot for was well, businesswoman or mom or it's funny. I had a, a Skype call from some clients well, of yours, I guess, who booked me from Shanghai, China yesterday. We had to do a Skype call and talk about, you know, what they wanted. That was so cool. I just thought that was so cool. So the world is your oyster. There's people booking from everywhere on this site, right? Yep. No, that's so, great. Yeah. And- we, we've had a couple of questions come in. I, I'd kind of like to get to them before I forget. Okay. Because um, I guess we'd, we'd talked about Sean Guernsey. Um, and first of all, how you spell his last name, I believe it's G-U-R-N-S-E-Y, I believe. Right. If you Google him, you'll probably find the news story on him because he, he's okay. just such a great news story. Uh, and I think, what because you got the mic that he got. What was it, the 1840? Yeah. I wrote it down. I don't even remember. I what think it, that's what I it was. I don't know what I have. I, I have, uh, yeah, Audio Technica AT4040. Yeah. Yeah. which is a, obviously an, an excellent microphone. And Mike is asking, do you have to answer all of the auditions that you get each day? You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. No, you don't have to do anything. Like I said, it's a sales, it's a numbers game. If you have time, you do it on your own time whenever. I have found um, with being a successful actor, aside from the voice acting, that often the the quicker you submit an audition, like you sub, do a submission, they, the better it is for you because they might find what they need and they don't need to listen to a hundred of them. So if you're in the top bunch or whatever, they might go through those. So I don't know. Like I guess every client would be different of how many auditions they actually listen to. But you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. And you do it whenever you feel like it. So, yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. And that's that's what our suggestions is is do as many as you can. Um, they're not meant to take a lot of your time of your day. You know, and obviously you're just increasing your odds of, of getting hired. Yep. 100%. Now, I might be, might be jumping a bit ahead here, but what is your process like for, for picking what you audition to? I audition to everything that I get sent. I, you know what? I just thought maybe I should be looking other places <laughs> because I just, whatever emails I say that I get sent that say I'm a match, those are the ones that show up in my list. But probably if I added some different um, taglines or whatever to me, maybe I would be getting even other stuff. So I, I haven't had time to do that. I've just been having fun working with what I've got with things that actually match up and they send me the, the notification. So. Have you uh, have you booked any work off of Voices.com or is this? I did. This- I did. I booked uh, one gig with somebody I know from Facebook who. Um, Uh, Ryan Singh Enterprises and he had a gig that he was doing which is a national campaign for something I can't tell you what it is because of the (laughs) non-disclosure agreement but uh, yeah so I did and he was very happy he came to my home studio actually because I know him so it's not like I'm going to invite strangers to my home to to, (laughs) do recordings but yeah we did it and uh, yeah I billed him this morning (laughs) nice what's the uh, what's what's the favorite job that you've booked so far to this point on Voices.com? Yeah. You know what? There was one that I booked that I was really proud of. It was um, for a na- an older Native American woman. And it was to read this poem. And I just thought, okay, like let me just like channel my Native American woman from somewhere. I mean, my background is Polish. But I don't even know where that voice came out. I just felt... I just did it as if I was her and I felt like her. And by the end of the poem, I was actually crying. There were tears pouring down my cheeks and I booked it. But I mean, I did. I wasn't trying to be overly dramatic, but it was a really a beautiful thing that I really connected with. And it was a fun thing to try to not sound like me. Exactly. Right. Put a spin nice. on it. 
So. So you've been, like you said, you've been working on Voices since September now. Uh, what made you want to take the next step to upgrade to start auditioning? Is it September already? No, it's like, a, no, it must be mid-October. I think it's mid-October I started. It? Okay. Yeah, it's not two months for sure. But what did, what was the question? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like uh, two months yeah. now. <laughs> what, what made you want to uh, sort of take the next step to start auditioning for the jobs? The next step from acting? What do you mean? Yeah. The next step for like to audition? That's that is the main step. That is the only right. step. <laughs> yeah. So and it, you were just eager to to get going and to start auditioning and putting your yeah. Hat in the ring. No, I thought okay, like I've got all the equipment set up now. I had a little help from my friend with soundboards and. and the, I'm sitting in my little studio here. So I have a friend. I'm kind of lucky that way too. So if you know anybody who is a musician or anything, my flair, my flair, <laughs> my friend Blair, I just combine it all into one word sometimes. My friend Blair Pack um, had a 1980s band called The Jitters. And he, and uh, we're friends on Facebook too. And he said, oh, I have some extra soundboards, like if you're looking, because he knew I signed up for Voices.com. And I thought, oh yeah, like, I'll buy those from you. So I went and he actually helped me come and set up I, when I ordered the mic and got me this what is this called like a the thing that stops peas a pea popper thingy a screen yeah, a pop screen yeah there is a pea popper screen it's a pop screen people so that he, he had one and I bought his stuff from him actually gifted that to me because I bought everything else from him that I needed so yeah no, I was just ready to get going um, now so when you when you finally did start auditioning what uh, what was that like fun it was a little nerve-wracking because you you're listening to yourself and you're not usually list like, regularly listening to yourself you know how some people th say oh I hate my voice when I hear it that's so weird <laughs> but it's I, I heard it and it's like ooh, that sounds bad so just e keep erasing it and doing it over until I felt like yeah that sounds better but I find myself now anytime I'm in the car or anything listening to ads I'm analyzing everybody now <laughs> It's like a job hazard. It's like, oh, they sound really good. Or it's like, oh, come on, I could have done better than that. You know, it's very funny. Like you're really, really in tune with what's happening when you're listening to the radio now. It's fun. Now, it didn't take you very long to book, though. I mean, because and I, I remember hearing from you because I, I, I remember <laughs> the conversation we had when we were getting you set up and and you had asked about, OK, what what equipment should we get? So we talked about different different options there. And I remember how excited you were. <laughs> And I think, I don't know if you remember, but I said to you, when we ended the conversation, I said, I can see you doing really well at this just based on your personality. And because again, relating it back to Sean, same type of thing. It's, and I, I it must come through in the auditions, just this, this, this positive um, energy that you, you know, that you're, you just, you, you always have it. Um, and, and. Do you, is that something that just comes naturally, or do you do you, do you work on that? I mean, no. Because thank, obviously well, thanks for saying be... that. No, I'm I'm naturally a very positive person. People just yeah, <laughs> that's probably a lot of uh, where the success comes from. It's just having a good, happy disposition, being wanting, being in a place where you want to help people. Also, you know, do a good job, make their lives easier. And yeah, no, why not be positive? For goodness sakes, we've got a choice to be miserable or be happy. Be happy. <laughs> No, oh, absolutely. So, Liz, what do you know now, having uh, booked some jobs that you wish you would have known from the beginning? Oh, gosh, I did a couple of little flubs. It's like, oh, man, I know. Poor Dave. It was so funny. It's like, I booked one. So the, the first week I booked three days in a row. And every time I booked, I would like send Dave an email going, Dave, I booked another one. And I, th I thought, OK, I will stop at some point. It's just that there's nobody else in my house right now to share that with. And I'm like doing a happy dance. Right? <laughs> So it's like, um, see, I lost the question again. It's part like dementia. Or, no, I shouldn't even say that, but never mind. Let's go past that that comment. That's that's a bad comment. But uh, what was the actual? I was line just asking of if, uh, what did you? What have you learned that you wish you had? Oh yes. The beginning so of the now process? yes, bring me back to that. So after that first week, which was awesome, then the second week, I thought, what's going on? I haven't booked anything. It's like, hmm. Like, what's wrong, right? And then I, I went back and I thought, well, let me listen to the, um, the jobs that I have responded to. And oh my God, I could feel the, dr the blood drain from my face. <laughs> I kept sending everybody the same file from one job that I had downloaded instead of from my desktop voice folder. So everybody 
Every job that I submitted to for a week was the same file of the wrong job. Like, oh, so they must geez. have listened to it and thought, like, what's her problem? Okay, like, black ball, black ball. <laughs> but I've learned now to listen to it. And then yeah. before I send it, I listen to it. So that was one gigantic mistake I made. And another one, somebody sent me a message saying, uh, we love the sound of your voice. We love your read, but it's really quiet. Can you check your levels? I thought, levels? What are levels? Oh, yeah, my mic is turned like right down. So you have to just check those things before you start. And those are those things I would do differently. Now I'm doing them differently because I've learned. Life is no. a learning process, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it, it's, you know, it, it brings us to a question that uh, that was asked already on the panel. Um what what kind of feedback do you get from people that you know what auditions that you don't let, that, that you don't land the gig? Or do you get any feedback from the clients? Do you find or usually not? I think they're too busy. If they're not working with you, I mean, they're living their own lives. I haven't had a feedback from people that I didn't get the job. Although um, you have something on your system where it says whether if they like to the audition. And so the first week, it's like, oh, that's nice. Three people liked my audition out of like whatever, a ton of them. And now it's like, oh, that number has really jumped a lot. And I love that. And some of them, they have a longer time frame, right? Like all of a sudden they book you and it's like, what was that for? And it's from something a week ago. So it's not always just immediate. Some are, there's different timelines of the bookings from audition time to booking time. So maybe a whole bunch, maybe those 63 or whatever likes are all going to come through and I'm going to be sitting here really happy. <laughs> Well, it's definitely nice to get the positive feedback too. I mean, and and we do see from time to time where a client will will reach out to the talent and say, "Listen, I don't know if you know, but you've got this buzz going on in your auditions, or like you said, the the, the, it's the quiet. levels are quiet." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it's it's great when they take the time to do that because a lot of times you you wouldn't know otherwise. Well, you do um, because you listen to it, right? Like I listen after I, before I send it and attach a file, I listen to it. So if there was a weird buzz, I think I would know. Yeah. Well, maybe not, because now that that was after that second week that I was sending the same wrong file. <laughs> I think for some so, some people, too, the recording process is such a new experience that they don't know what to listen for. So they're not sure if that buzz is from their headphones or from the uh, audio they recorded. And like I hear no buzz right now from my headphones. Like, it's clean. But well, the, the, yeah, there was a learning process, actually, the one with that native as an, uh, an elder, a native elder. She asked me to edit something. I thought... Okay, no problem. And I thought, oh my God, how do you edit? <laughs> I had no idea. But it's like, I figured it out pretty quick. And it's so easy. I use Audacity. So it's like, it's just so easy. It's just a simple, simple. And I think that's what you recommended anyway, right, Dave? Yeah, it, I mean, if you're, there's a couple of good programs out there that are free. That, okay, and it yeah. And it kind of comes down to what kind of computer you're using. Uh -huh. So Audacity, yeah, is probably, you know, easy. one of the more popular ones. Um Garage Band, if you've got a Mac. Okay. Um, but uh, but that's that's a great segue. Brings us into into your studio. Um, tell us about the equipment you're using. Well, it's that. Uh, what is it? Forty forty. What is it? Okay, here. I'm getting my book because it's like I don't know what I ordered. Here, hold on a second. These are not for seeing. Uh, Audio Technica AT forty forty is the mic. I bought, uh, I guess I needed to get a Focus, what does this say? Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 Generation 2 USB audio interface with, what does that say? I can't read my own writing. With something tools first. Um, then what else? Good headphones. Uh, AKG K240 semi-open studio headphones. A mic cable. A Digiflex. You know what? I can give you the list. If anybody needs, just hit up Dave and I'll give you the list of what I bought. This is getting <laughs> boring now. And a, and a mic stand, a tripod. Awesome. Yeah. And Audacity. So ta-da. Yeah. And Everything on Amazon like the same day. If you have Amazon Prime, you can be starting tomorrow. So. <laughs> well, I, and I think, you know, Randy would be the expert there being the audio engineer that, uh, you know, the, the equipment she's using, that's all, that's all top yeah. notch, isn't it? Yeah. Is yeah, it? That's great. It's kind of in the middle. It wasn't like ridiculously expensive, but yeah. It hits that point where it's 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 great for voice recording. You know, if you were working on uh, on big albums and you wanted different different flavors of, of you know different sounds of mics, whatever it may be, uh, you can really invest into that. But uh -huh. getting a good a good mic that doesn't have uh, noise, doesn't have operating sound issues, uh, that's really the key. You know, we have a lot of people, as I was saying, that uh, want to get started using a phone or. Uh, no, you know, a, don't, a don't, because they can like hear that. the difference. They can, yeah. and they won't book you. 
you know, like that's my friend who, you know, had posted that is a very good actor. And I just thought, really, you didn't book anything? He said, I sent like a hundred and something. And I thought, really? Then I thought, you're using your phone? Like you can't use your phone. So that's another, like Blair Packham. Thank you, Blair Packham, wherever, if you ever. He also has a radio show. So I went to his place to buy the soundboards and we started talking and I said, what else do I need? Right? Like, what else do I need? He said, well, you need good headsets. So he s- recommended, the, like, the the proper headphones that he uses and all of that stuff. And I didn't know I needed this, whatever this is called, Focusrite 2i2, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right? We so like there's, to a, remind there's stuff you uh, need. It's an audio interface. Because I, it, the, I guess the mic I bought or whatever doesn't plug right into your computer. It has to go through something else. I don't know. But I can help you if you ask. I'll just guide you through <laughs> Yeah, Liz, we like to remind uh, people when they're getting started that a lot of the times the client will listen through the auditions and they're going to assume whatever you're submitting for your audition is going to be the same quality audio that you're going to submit for a final project. And so, you know, it doesn't really work where you can audition on a phone and they'll, you know, send you to a studio to go record the final project. They're going to assume that's what you're going to give them. So yeah, I don't think you, I don't person. think you would make the cut on who they're going to shortlist for a, for a job if you do it on equipment that isn't professional. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're booking, I mean, they're booking, I guess, I assume it's like a casting director, they're booking for another client, they've got to then pass it by the client and have that approved. Is that how it works? Sometimes. It's okay. every, every, yeah, every job is different. I okay. mean, sometimes you're dealing with the person who's hiring directly, sometimes you're dealing with the person that's responsible for bringing the short list to, okay. you know, yeah. Because you go, like, like you get, okay, it's Honda or whatever, and it's like, I don't know if the person with the cast, doing the casting call is from Honda head office, or if it's like they've hired somebody to find talent to do their commercial, right? Whatever, something like that. But okay, we just keep working. We work for it? anybody. I don't care who's sending the, who's sending the casting call. <laughs> Did you find the, uh, the editing difficult to do at the beginning? Was that uh, a hurdle for you or was that uh, easy? No, it was a, it was just a shock because I thought, sure, I can do that. And I thought, oh my God, like, do I have to have like a Blair come over and help me with that or something? But no, it was super easy, super, super easy. You just open a new file, do that, cut, like cut that out. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a pro at that now. It, that's easy. <laughs> now, in regards to um, jobs that maybe don't fall within your moral compass, um, the, the, first of all, the nice thing about about what you're going to see here is we are a very family friendly company. Um, so we don't allow any, any you know, jobs to be posted that are illicit or I mean, you know, even even certain, vi- you know, video games because of the violence content. I mean, you're not gonna oh, see yeah, that Oh yeah, 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 okay. No, I, I've never noticed anything that was, you know, that turned me off or made me think, ew, like there's nothing weird on there at all. No, I've found that the job postings that have come through are all very professional and some of you get really excited because you know the brand and it's a big brand and you think, oh yeah, you know, and it's like a, a great gig, right? Some, it's funny, I don't know how they determine what they charge or that range. That's what we were talking about. So that range, what do you feel? Like, do you feel that they're willing to pay that top range because they've posted it or not necessarily? Um, I mean, obviously, every client is going to be different, um, but I think, you know, when they when they post within a range, that's they're fully prepared to do that. Um, now, I know sometimes that, and this is another really nice thing about the way it's all set up is that's that's you know basically what they're saying is that's their range, but you are free to bid what whatever you think is appropriate, whatever you're comfortable with. All they can say is no. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, they may come back to you and say, well, listen, this is all we have to work with. You know, it, it's, it's up to, you know, whatever you agree upon. Um, just bear in mind. Do you think it's swayed? Like, how does that work? Is it coming from their pocket or the client's pocket? Or are they, if they are the client, I guess it's coming out of the client's pocket, but there's like this range. And do you think if there's two comparable voices or submissions that they would say, you know what, but we'll save a hundred bucks if we go with this one, let's just go with this one because it's better for them. What do you think? I, again, because there are so many different clients using the site, you're going to get something of everything. Um, I think for the most part though, they're more concerned. It's human nature, no? Like if they're saving money, that's the bottom line for the company, you know? I'm just trying to find out. I mean, I, I think when they're when they're hiring a professional voiceover talent, they're more concerned with getting good quality, you know, okay. than, than than saving fifty bucks. 
So, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, like the ones that are, yeah, I usually go into the just above the lower end or whatever, but some are like, geez, it's like 250 to 600 or something. I think, gee, you know what? My, like, Let's just try, do your best with the voice part. And then just like 250 is plenty for this like one minute spot or whatever, right? Like, especially if you're booking. And then sometimes you start to psych yourself out and you think, but I didn't book anything today. So I should do 600 now and hope to get that one to make up for it. It's just as a mind game you play with yourself, right? I think just trust your intuition. Just think, okay, how much? Okay, that's the number. Put it in and whatever happens, happens. Let the chips fall as they may, right? Yep. No, exactly. I mean, and you have to do what's comfortable for you. Um, uh-huh. Now, when when you're doing an audition, how? Because uh, I know this is a question that comes up a lot. How how much time do you spend on one audition? Um, it depends. I mean, there are various lengths, but not not much because you recommend that we don't do the whole script if they send a script, just a little portion. Otherwise, they can just pirate it and take your script and say, thanks very much. Done. Right. And never and you never get paid. So usually just enough so they get a flavor of what you would sound like doing that role. OK. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, uh, and one of the one of the reasons, too, that we, we recommend you just do a, a small portion is because at the end of the day, you're right, it is a sample. Um, it's, it's, you want to give the client an authentic sample of how you will sound if they hire you, but you also need to consider your own day and that you have other auditions to do. And every audition requires a certain amount of editing. So the, the long, if you read a a five minute script, there's going to be a lot more editing in there than if you read 15 seconds. Oh God, no, I've never done a five minute script. I usually like the most they'll get is like a one minute thing. Not even that's, that's even really, really long, I think. A minute? Nah. Just a few lines. A paragraph is plenty. I don't think they have time to listen to all of that. They know what they're looking for or what they're listening for in this case. And I think they make a decision right away based on what the first couple of lines sound like. So you don't need to waste your time or theirs and just get on with it. On to the next audition, (laughs) right? (laughs) And Liz, how much time do you put into uh, editing each audition? Um, It depends if I'm feeling it when I listen back. Not a lot. Sometimes it's like I've, I learned when Ryan came and helped me, well, not helped me, when he booked me for the job and helped me when he was here, um, to actually that you can, I was trying to do it all just like, like perfectly without taking a longer breath than I may have needed to say the next line and then just editing out the breath part. So I've learned that and like to just chill, take it easy on yourself, you know, and then listen back and just think, okay, if I was a TV ad or like, what does that sound like? Is it rushed or is it, you know, so no, I don't spend a lot of time. Usually the most I will do is just, you know, edit out the breaths and pull it back together again. Um, But aside from that, no, not, I don't spend much time at all on editing. How many, uh, how many auditions will you typically do in a day on average? However many you send me. <laughs> <laughs> because you get the notices, but honestly, from your site, I, it, I'm so surprised. I, it's like 20, 30 sometimes you get. Like a lot, a lot. And they don't take long, but it's fun. And a day goes by so fast. Like it's, you're, you know, grab your cappuccino in the morning and you're home and you're doing them. And then suddenly it's like three. It's like, why am I starving? Because it's three o'clock. How did five (laughs) hours go by? Like, I really enjoy it so, so much. And I think you've got to love what you do because that reflects in your success, right? So. Right. So you're auditioning to everything that we send you. Uh, Do you have a a specific strategy as to which ones you do first or uh, which ones you spend more time on? I start, I didn't start out with a strategy like that. Now I look at what their deadline is and do like if some are like they, they need it today. If it's a rush, then you I go through those and do those right away. Um, if it's like the deadlines tomorrow, I do those. So I mostly do it by date category and by money category. Like if there's some that are 500 or whatever, and then there's, but mostly it's the date because you know they need it by a certain date and then, right? Get it in there, get it there. <laughs> exactly. Get on it as early as you can. Yeah, get it in their hands so they can decide. Yeah. So now for, for somebody that's, uh, that's, you know, that's just signed up, um, they're putting their profile together. Um, I know a lot, of, uh, a lot of people wonder about demos, how many they should put up, um, what types of demos they should put up. What, uh, what have you done with yours to this point? Well, I didn't have anything for a while, like for a few, the first few days. I don't know. Do I don't even know. Do you think they actually go and listen to your demo or they just listen to what you've submitted for their business? But anyway, that's me asking you a question. Let me answer your question first. So I thought, oh, I should do a demo. <laughs> so I thought, what will I say? I have no idea what to say. So I went, uh, so I Googled, 
you know, a script for voiceover. And there was a bunch of things, different scripts. And I thought, okay, let me pick this one and just read it basically, and record that. So it was good because it gave a variety of, um, of tones and intonations. And, you know, you sound, you can sound like a little grandma or a really sweet girl, or you can be a completely like crazy woman, you know? So it was a lot of fun, like doing that. So I just, I thought, okay, I'll do that demo. Then I thought somebody sent me, it's like, well, if you speak Polish, why don't you t- like do a Polish demo and tag it Polish because then people will be able to find you. And I thought, oh, Oh, okay. So I did that. I did a little Italian one. I didn't do a French one because it's like French. I, I'm not great. If I'm in Paris for like more than a week, it all comes flooding back, you know, but it's not, I'm not fluent by any stretch in French. And when I see a, um, a you know, a casting call that comes up, this has a thousand words in French. I just delete it. It's like, no, nope, don't have time to work on that, you know, but if it's a one or two lines, no problem. So um, so, okay, so with the, the demos that you've got up there, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about, because we, we do strongly encourage people to, to, to be very thorough in, in the labeling of your demos, and I don't mean by the title you give it, but by the descriptors that you add kind of behind the scenes. You, you know what I mean, the tag words for the, mm-hmm. for the styles mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. the roles that you play. What what have you done there? Yeah, no, a businesswoman, it depends on on what the demo is that I've done. Like the Polish one, it was like, there's one that's singing. It's like from when I was a little Polish dancer as a kid. It's like, I've got this raspy voice when I sing. And I I actually did one yesterday. I was doing a little jazz and I thought, oh, I need to load that to voices.com and just sample, say what it is. And it gives you a drop down list of whatever the the sound is. And you just pick from their drop down list. And then if people are looking for that, I guess, I assume that's what pulls up. It, you know, it gets highlighted in, Highlight, highlighted, highlighted, yeah. highlighted, highlighted. <laughs> into what they're looking for. And then they listen to you. And if they like you, they might. I've had that happen. That People have sent me a message when I did the Polish one. But I haven't booked a Polish one on Voices. But I am doing a Polish feature film this weekend, starting this weekend, where I play the mom. So it's like, yeah, I do speak Polish. <laughs> so Liz, aside from the languages, do you have any other strategies as to uh, which demos you're going to put up? I, well, I'm going to do some singing now because I loved that. And when I was a kid, I actually you know, got a standing ovation in Hamilton Place for singing something. And it's like, I haven't really focused on that. I don't think there's a lot of need for that particularly on Voices.com. But there might be. There might be like a jingle or commercial or, or something. So, yeah, I'm going to have to add more demos, right? <laughs> right. How many demos should I yeah. put? Like 100 as, demos. As find me. Find me. <laughs> Yeah, no, and to, and to answer your your question from earlier, uh, yeah, it's it's really more about as far as what the client hears, it's it's the auditions you submit, um, the demos they are there for when someone is searching for talent, and if you've got things that they can listen to, that's great. Uh, particularly if you're a guest member, um, it still gives you the ability to get hired, um, but in th- th- those descriptors are absolutely they're they're key in making sure that you're as as matched up to jobs that are posted or matched up to clients searching for those characteristics as we can. You know, so if you've got, say, five demos up there and you've you've maxed out your style words using different ones on each one, that's 50 different descriptors that we can use to match you to, to jobs that get posted on the site. So that's why you do want to fill those out. Okay, I better add more demos. Thank you. <laughs> now, Liz, do you have any uh, demos that are professionally produced or have you done them all yourself? I did them just here, whatever I felt like doing, sitting in my the corner of my bedroom here with my setup. No, just nothing has been professionally produced. And I've never asked anybody. That was That's interesting. I've never asked anybody for anything that I've done because, I mean, I'm so fresh, right? But this these people from Shanghai, I thought, oh, I love this commercial. They sent me the, um, like the video part of it and then where my part would be and what I would have to say, the lines. And I thought, this is so great. Can you send that to me when it's done? Like, can I, this is great, right? It was for a, a technical, like a an IT thing, a gadget, whatever. I thought, I want that. Can I use that in my demo? But this is all audio, right? Like you can't add a commercial, right? Right. Or can you? Or do you separate the audio? See, I don't even know. Maybe you can separate the audio and add that, but then it would make no sense. It's more, it was beautiful with the visual that they sent. So that's fun when a client sends you that and it's like, okay, you need to pace it to, so this makes sense. And it's fun. It's, all, it's just creating together. Now, when, you're, uh, when you go to audition, because um, I know this is something that, you know, your average person hasn't 
read a script before. Um, how do you tackle a script? Now, do you do you print it out? Do you read it off a screen? Uh, I know some people will print it out and they'll they'll mark it up so they know what words to emphasize and where to take their pauses. What's what's your strategy there? Mm, no, you know what? When my friend Ryan, the other booking that wasn't from Voices.com, he marked up the script and we changed it a, a few different ways. But I just read it right off of my. I work off of my laptop and just read it right from the screen. Nah, that takes too much time. I move fast. I move fast. It's like, nah, I'm going to mark up and print off and that, 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 that. It's right there in my face. So you do half screen, you minimize. You do half of your screen is where the script would be or the, you know, everything there. And the other half is your, your system, your audacity, right? So it's like, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any uh, sort of pregame warmups that you do? Do you know what? No. Jumping jack. Which is so weird. No, I haven't, but I should probably, right? That's probably why in the morning, the first couple of takes is like, that sounds like, that's terrible. Okay, hold on. I need water. I keep a <laughs> And then after a couple of takes, your voice sort of smooths out a bit, which is probably the point of doing some kind of exercises before doing it, which I have never done. So now, that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, what would you do? Like, me, 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 me. Like, what would you do? Singing, talking. I don't know what you would do. I think, yeah, it's just a matter of getting the, the instrument warmed up for the day and right? sort of getting into that sweet spot, right? Where, that what are you supposed to do? Like, <laughs> like, do whatever. I don't know what you're supposed to do. <laughs> but no, to answer your question, I have not done warm ups. I don't, I wouldn't even know. I guess I'm going to YouTube it after we're finished the, with this webcast to find out what people actually do to warm up for doing voiceovers. Okay. I, I think the, the main thing is is keeping your voice hydrated. And you talked about that, getting a drink ah. of water. I mean, because, yeah, especially, and, you know, but I know a lot of people, they prefer their sound when they first wake up in the morning. They've got that 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 raspiness, that, that gravelly type sound. But I guess it, it all depends on what kind of what kind of job you're going after, too. Yeah, I saw a posting like that a few days ago for a raspy voice. And I thought, Shouldn't have submitted. I should have waited till tomorrow morning when they, when you do have that raspy voice because I thought they reposted it. I saw they didn't book anybody and it would, then they reposted it. So it's like, it's hard to find a raspy voice, right? Mine's raspy now for some reason because I don't usually speak this much, I guess. But it's, yeah, crazy. No, it's because I was doing the, the singing, doing the singing last night to the jazz and like wailing it out. But I have that saved. I'm going to add it as a demo and you can listen to it later. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, Liz, you you said you audition for everything, but do you find that there's a certain uh, type of work that you're booking more than another? Not really, because none of the clients have been repeat clients. So usually it says businesswoman or like what is it? All, all men? What is it? Like every man, every man, every type of person, whatever, you know, it'll say on the, um, on the audition casting call, whether they want any kind of accent, which is actually hilarious because you can just play with that. And you know what? It might be great or it might be like, <laughs> not so great, but it's fun submitting with accents of different things. Really fun, really fun. And I've had auditions liked with accents that I've just created in my head, like give me a Jamaican accent or a, like this. It, it's so fun. <laughs> That's great. Now, question with the holidays fast approaching. Um, we get this question quite a lot with people wondering about what do I do when I'm away for, you know, two weeks at a time? Uh, have you been in a situation where you weren't able to audition and you had to uh, audition remotely? I think I would go squirrely. I haven't had that yet, but I am going away um, after like next week I'm going away. I'm taking my equipment with me, man. I'm going to just pack it up in a suitcase. I'm going to take my mic and my mic stand. And I have just, um, what do you call that? Like a C? I have another... I should move my computer so you can see it. The microphone's here, and then it's got another sound thing around it, which I don't know what it's called. It's but, like a Vox um, guard kind of thing? That's probably what it's called. So in case there's an airplane outside or something going by, I'm not waiting all the time. It, it blocks that out and muffles that so you don't get that. But I think I would bring that and my mic and just, yeah... Because I need to be productive to be happy, even if I'm on vacation. If I see, especially when you're emailing me that there's all these opportunities, if I'm not able to do them, I'll be like, I need to go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's easy enough to take your stuff with you if you, you know, if you want to, or else it's actually good in life to take a vacation because the world's not going to change that much in a week or two that you're gone. If you need a break, take a break. Right. Yeah, and it's good to take the breaks too, of course. But uh, when you when you are working, do you find that you're more productive now than when you started? Ah, uh, 
now that I've figured out that I'm not sending the same file over and over again, yeah, I'm way more productive. <laughs> it's a, no, I'm I I love doing it. From morning to night, it can go by, and it's like I work around this. Actually, this is my favorite thing to do. Or I mean, obviously, acting. If I'm on set for a TV show or a film or something like that, that's awesome. I love working from home. And I don't know if you know, I just came from the doctors. I wiped out my motorcycle and I might have a broken knee. So, but I can still stay home and work. How great is this? <laughs> it works. It works. And I have oh. no issue with that. It's so nice to work from home. Oh, yeah. We're glad that you could be here with us, even with a broken knee. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're going to send find- me a sweatshirt though, right? I want the sweatshirt. You want okay. the sweatshirt. Yes. <laughs> You want you want the blue or the black? The voices doc. I want one of each. How about that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Come on, as a sweatshirt. I'll send you both a toque. <laughs> okay. Wild Maple Films from my production <laughs> company. Okay. So, Liz, uh, when when you when you're auditioning, um, do you ever find yourself looking to see how many people have auditioned before you decide to jump in, um, or does that even matter to you? I look sometimes. I just think, ugh. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of them but usually I'm I'm kind of into this so much that I'm sitting here and I'm usually one of the first bunch you know and sometimes if I have time and I think hmm let me go back and listen to some of the the submissions I've made and sometimes I edit like I'll not edit but I'll I'll resubmit I'll do another take on it and I'll say that sounds better and I'll just upload that and just edit the audition and upload a better sounding one if pardon me if I go back to it and think "Mm, you can do better than that so if there's nothing else coming up, because like, okay, where's the next one? Where's the next one? Where's the next one? <laughs> if there's nothing, you can go back and listen to what you've done. And it's like, mm, you can tweak it if you want to. So, Now, how many people do you typically find uh, are auditioning with you for a particular job? Probably around 30 is the standard, I think, like 30, 35, something like that. I've seen some that are, you know what, when people post and it's a really high paying job, it's like, yeah, 80 something within an hour. People are, I don't know if if, um, voice talents are just waiting for the bigger paying jobs and just doing that or what they're doing. But And I submit to everything. It doesn't really matter. You should start your deadline or your like the low point higher. It starts at a minimum of a hundred bucks, right? Most right. of them, but most of the jobs start at about two fifty, and then they give you their range. So, yeah, it's uh, it's fun to start booking. So I think basically you have to build up your reputation and your your resume, right? As in anything, and then you're more credible, and maybe they'll just you know if they have enough five star reviews, it's like just start putting in at that top level and see what happens, right? But. Now, have you, uh, what, because I know one of the things that we, we try to encourage people to do is obviously to audition a lot. Um, obviously, first of all, that's going to give you a better chance of getting, getting some jobs. Um, but because of, you know, who Voices.com is in the industry, there are a lot of really big name clients that do a lot of, you know, a, a lot of jobs that need voiceover. So we always say, you're not auditioning for a job. You're auditioning for a client so that you can get some of that repeat business. Um, have you had any repeat business yet? I know it's only been a few weeks since you joined. Yeah, not yet, but I'm hoping for some. I mean, I've had great reviews, all five-star reviews, and the people tend to write a little note with it, or the you know, it's it's so nice to just get a message from them saying, we love your voice. Thank you so much. You made this so easy. It was such a pleasure working with you. Like, that's such gratification, really. Um, for touch on one thing about, uh, you know, some, maybe some basic tips for somebody that's kind of on the fence about, you know, is this, is this something that's a, a, a feasible profession? Um, and you know, what, what should I expect if I decide to get this started? Well, I think really you have to feel it. You have to know that if this is something you want to do, you need to invest in yourself as a business and do it. It's, you know what? Everybody has their own choices in life, right? Of what they want to do and how they want to spend their time and earn money. Once you get going, I mean, I don't know. I have been so fortunate. I just, I feel like I've been so fortunate. And it's not like it's been that hard, but it is a numbers game. So you have to have time to put into it, you know, put in your time and effort. And I think it's a brilliant business. Oh man, if you can just, yeah, you can take it with you. It's portable. Just take your mic and some, you know, some soundboard or whatever with you. You can, you're free. You're free to do whatever you want and you're self-employed. So 
I love it. So, I mean, everybody's got to figure out their own life, but it's aces for me. Like, this is it. I could do this forever. Touching on what we just talked about, do you think it's possible to start off doing this as a side job in addition to a full-time job, or do you need to be more responsive than just weekend and evening work? No, for sure you can. You just, Everything is on your own time. And like I said, some of the, the jobs, that, I mean, they've got a window. They're posting it today, but they're not accepting or choosing for days. So you've got absolutely time to do it when you feel like doing it. Um, does Voices.com have a minimum uh, that a, a client can pay per job, uh, such as you'll accept no job below $250, for instance. See, um, I like that number too. I said that number earlier. <laughs> it is, it's 100, which I think voices.com should make them say at least 250. Well, in, in all fairness, <laughs> it, it it all comes down to what the job is. And we, we do monitor that, you know, that, that people are following industry standards. So, you know, you can't take say a $4,000 broadcast job and post it for 500 bucks. Um, but it, again, it, it all depends on what, if it's being for broadcast, if it's uh, the, the word count, it's, there are a number of factors that go into right. determining what a, what a job is worth. Yeah, but you know what, 100 bucks US when you don't have to chase money is great. I love their system. I don't know if people who aren't um, involved in doing this yet, but it's paid in US dollars. The client, when they book you, the money gets held in escrow right away with Voices.com, so it's there. And once they once it's finalized and it's the your recording is approved, every Friday they send you money, and it's like through PayPal or whatever. It's beautiful. I love those messages. PayPal has sent you this. PayPal has. <laughs> it's you know it, it's a great system. And a hundred bucks US really for oh my god, I had so much fun with the uh, the American election. I wish I could hear my voice in like Oregon and different places. Oh, they're evil there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, they're like these bash campaigns of this person did this and that's why you shouldn't vote for them. So now I'm looking forward to the Christmas Christmas marketing. That's going to be way more fun mm -hmm. than, than that. But and, yeah. Uh, and I think yeah. we should point out too that Liz is Canadian. This is why. Oh, you, that's you why it's the, everywhere. The, I'm the in references. Toronto. We're yeah. friendly. We try to not yell and like, you know, but anyways, it's fine. If you want to put someone down, send me the, send me the okay. script. <laughs> no, and it's, and it's great I, reference. It's great referencing the U.S. dollars because, yeah, the Canadian yeah. dollars is, you know, they're not worth anything. So the fact exactly. that... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So when um, you say 100 bucks, it's still like, what is it? Like 3,000 Canadian anyway, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, along those lines too, because you, you did mention uh, about the, the payment system, does Voices.com take a, a percentage of the fee that the voice actors negotiate? No, we do not. Um, if you negotiate, say, a job that pays you $500, you get $500. Uh, we, we do have a fee that goes with that to the client, but no, it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't impact what you negotiated. Um, another question, do you add uh, royalty-free music to your demos or do you only record your voice? I mean, Liz, what did you do for your demos? I have only recorded my voice, but that's brilliant. I'm going to do some kind of like create something with some free music online and do that because then it sounds more like a commercial, right? Or more like a TV ad or a spot. So thank you, whoever asked that question. That's a good question. I've just done raw, raw. This is my voice. I'm a voice actor, blah, blah, blah. You, and you can find a script, just Google voice acting scripts and just do that. And then if you add music, oh my God, how good is that going to sound? Thank you. <laughs> now, have you ever been asked to add music or sound effects to a to a job that you've been hired for? There was no, there was one, not one that I booked, but there was one audition that they asked to do that. So that's another learning curve, right? It's like, oh, okay. So I went and found some and I thought, I thought it sounded awesome, but I didn't get booked. Maybe it's still, maybe the jury's still out and I'll still get it. But uh, no, the only ones that, that they posted that, that the, it should be set with this music in the background. I think it was for like a, to put on hold for a telephone, like a, a company for their, their message, their outgoing message, if they're not answering the phones. Exciting, nice. exciting stuff. Well, Liz, <laughs> you know what? It's unfortunately, we're, we're just about out of time. And, uh, no way. We, but uh, before we go, any, any final thoughts, Liz, on, you know, on, on the site, on the industry and for, for, for say newcomers that are watching? I think, like I said, I did investigate a little bit and do some research. It's I'm so happy I signed on with a very professional site like Voices.com. Honestly, there are some free sites out there, but you're just mixed in with a bunch of hack, you know, and clients, good professional clients and big brands, they don't have time for that. So I think 
It's known as the number one voice company for a reason. So if you want to be associated with the number one, Voices.com is your company. They didn't pay me to say this, but I'm really, really happy and I feel proud to be a part of your team. So, Well, we're, we're certainly glad to have you. Uh, you can't have enough people singing your praise and you've definitely... You know, you, you've definitely made your mark in your short time here. So congratulations, Liz. It's been, you know, it's been wonderful seeing your your meteoric rise to success in, you know, and, you know, and it just, I think it's been very inspirational for a lot of people that have heard your story. I know it's been inspirational to myself. Um, and uh, so thanks so much for, for sharing your story with us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. Are you glad I stopped sending you messages every time I booked something now? <laughs> I, you know what? I was, I was never, I was, I, I was enjoying those. It was so great to hear. I'd get into work the next day and another, another job for Liz. And there are some people that do that. And I, I really, it's, it makes me feel good. It's, it's nice to hear that, uh, that, that people are having success. It's a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm really, like I said, I'm really pleased that I signed on with you. And I have to thank you, David, for all your help in, you know, being instrumental in like, okay, what kind of mic does that guy use and ordering the right stuff? Because that's key. I just got called David. I, I, I feel like I'm in trouble now. <laughs> um, well, Liz, <laughs> I, I do so rock the mother roles, you know, David. <laughs> Well, again, thanks so much for today, Liz, and and all the best in your in your voiceover career moving forward with us. It's 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 so fantastic to work with you. Thanks, people in the world, and if you're booking, find me on IMDb, Liz Taylor, Roman numeral four. Okay, little plug, eh? You can't get rid of that in the webcast, can you? <laughs> Liz Taylor on IMDb. I'm the first one that comes up because Elizabeth was taken. So, <laughs> thanks, you guys. <laughs>